With pneumothorax, pneumo refers to air and thorax means chest. So a pneumothorax is when there's air in the chest. More specifically, air in the space between the lungs and the chest wall, called the pleural space. The pleural space lies between the parietal pleura, which is stuck to the chest wall, and the visceral pleura, which is stuck to the lungs. The pleural space normally contains a lubricating fluid that helps reduce friction as the lungs expand and contract. Pressure within the pleural space is established by two main opposing forces. One is the muscle tension of the diaphragm and the chest wall, which contract and expand the thoracic cavity outwards. And the other is the elastic recoil of the lungs, which try to pull the lungs inward. The two pull on each other, creating a balance between the forces that creates a slight vacuum in the pleural space. It results in the pleural space having a pressure of minus 5 centimetres of water relative to a pressure of 0 centimetres of water in both the thoracic cavity and the lungs. A pneumothorax forms when the seal of the pleural space is punctured and air moves in from the outside, making the pressure in the pleural space equalised to 0 centimetres of water. Since the negative pleural pressure is lost, the two opposing forces no longer pull on one another. As a result, the lungs simply pull inwards and collapse, and the chest wall simply springs outwards a bit. A collapsed lung limits how well it can exchange air, and can lead to a reduction in an oxygen being brought into the body, and a build-up of carbon dioxide in the body because it can't get released. There are many types of pneumothorax. The first is spontaneous pneumothorax, which typically occurs when a bullet, which is a large air pocket, forms on the surface of the lung and breaks. Bullet form when the alveoli, which are the terminal ends of the lungs where gas exchange occurs, develop a tiny leak and air slowly seeps into the surrounding lung tissue. Typically, the alveoli heal up, otherwise it would itself lead to a pneumothorax. But the result is a bullet, and if the bullet breaks, it creates a large hole in the visceral pleura, and air can go from the airway directly into the pleural space. A primary spontaneous pneumothorax is one that develops in the absence of an underlying condition. Most typically, it's a thin, tall, adolescent male who's holding his breath, creating a lot of internal pressure. A secondary spontaneous pneumothorax is one that develops in someone with an underlying lung disease, like Marfan syndrome, cystic fibrosis, emphysema or lung cancer. In contrast to spontaneous pneumothorax, there's also traumatic pneumothorax, which is when trauma, like a gunshot wound or a stab wound, rips through the parietal pleura, allowing air to enter from the outside directly into the pleural space. Finally, there's tension pneumothorax, which can develop similarly to a spontaneous pneumothorax or a traumatic pneumothorax, with the one difference being that it creates a one-way valve for air to flow into the pleural space. In other words, air can enter, but cannot leave because there's a flap of tissue that doesn't allow air to go the other way. Over time, air might build up, increasing the pressure, and it can start compressing the heart and lung, making them less functional, and it can shift large structures like the trachea. A tension pneumothorax that's pressing on the heart is particularly dangerous because it can prevent the heart from filling up properly, reducing the cardiac output. The main symptoms of a pneumothorax are shortness of breath and chest pain. The extra air in the pleural space also changes sound transmission in the chest. So on auscultation, or listening with a stethoscope, normal breath sounds are reduced. Also, when the chest is tapped or percussed, the extra air in the pleural space makes the resonant sound get louder known as hyperresonance. Typically, an X-ray or CT is needed for diagnosis, and usually an outline of the collapsed lung can be seen, with a distinct difference between the lung tissue, which is mostly black, and the air in the pleural space, which is completely black. If there's a tension pneumothorax, an X-ray or CT might show displacement of the chest structures, like the trachea, away from the affected side. This is called tracheal deviation. Often, if a spontaneous pneumothorax is small and not causing any shortness of breath, no treatment is required, and the pleural will heal over time. But with a larger pneumothorax that's causing severe symptoms, or with a tension pneumothorax, the air needs to be removed. 
Typically, this is done by inserting a needle or a chest tube and providing an escape route for the air. Alright, as a quick recap, a pneumothorax is when there's air in the pleural space and a loss of negative pressure. That leads to lung collapse and chest wall expansion, which can cause shortness of breath and chest pain. A tension pneumothorax is when there's a flap of tissue creating a one-way valve and it can allow pressure to build up. Over time, that can press against nearby organs like the heart and potentially affect cardiac output. In severe cases, a needle or chest tube can be used to decompress the air in the pleural space.